I don't have an intro to this video. I don't. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. So today's video is going to be a really quick, um, but uh, very uh, informational breakdown of drug analysis. So drug analysis is something that we do in our controlled substances section, uh, where we have submissions that could be powders, crystals, liquids, solid substances. And we have to determine two things. First thing is how much of that substance is there. And then two is, is a controlled substance present or not? The reason we answer the first question is there are certain penalties that um, lie with larger amounts of drugs. And the second is, should this person be charged with possessing a drug or not? So um, we're gonna just go through the schematic or the, the basically the scheme of how we analyze drugs in the lab. And uh, hopefully you find this interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share with you, I'm gonna go to this one. So if you're in my class, then you are very, very familiar with the fact that I kind of break down a lot of forensic science into two steps. We have the screening step where we're determining is something present or not. And then we have the confirmatory step, meaning uh, if it's screened positive, meaning that that substance could be there, then we're going to confirm its presence using a more refined and mathematical based technique. So for this, uh, for this video, I'm going to talk about not, not very in depth each one specifically, but just how we go through it all from top to bottom. And uh, yeah, it should be really interesting. If you want more in depth videos, um, as far as the GCMS and the IR, there are videos on this channel that hopefully will help you with that, all right? So let's get started. So the first thing that we do is we look at a screening step. So a screening step is just to, to, to tell you, is that substance there or not? Uh, meaning, is it possible that it might be there? So if something screens positive, we say that it's possible or it's um, likely that something is there but it doesn't mean that we've confirmed it. It's not a confirmation. That's what we leave our second step with our confirmation test. So in controlled substances analysis, we have two types of screening tests and we usually do them in this order. We'll do a color test and then we'll do a crystalline test, all right? So what is a color test? A color test is something where we have colorless liquids usually, they're usually colorless, and when we add a little amount of the drug to that colorless liquid, it will change color depending on what uh, drug family it's part of. So the big drug families that I can think of are the amphetamine, so amphetamine, methamphetamine, uh, the opiates, heroin, morphine, codeine, uh, cocaine will cause a different color reaction. Um, what other stuff is there? Um, do, uh, marijuana has a certain color test associated with it. We have a Van Erks color test for uh, hallucinogens, so that would be LSD or mushrooms. All right, so that's what we, what we look for. We add a little bit of the drug to our color test, and depending on the color, that will tell us what road we're going to go down to. So to kind of make this a little clearer, um, I, I use this example. So um, our class is at Cal State LA. And uh, where Cal State LA is, is where the 10 and the 710 meet. It's like a perfect intersection, actually. So kind of think of a uh, color test as when you get out of class and you're wearing a mood ring, because like we're in the 70s, I don't know, disco is still alive in my mind. Um, I really love disco, actually. So you're wearing a mood ring, and depending on what color that mood ring is, that's going to tell you what direction you're going to go to. Are you, you know, is your mood ring feeling red? Are you feeling fiery and feisty like I am right now? Um, so if it's red, then you're gonna go out. You're gonna have fun with your friends. You're gonna go do something fun, crazy, wild. Not in coronavirus times. This is like pre-corona PC. Um, is your mood ring blue? If your mood ring is blue, that might mean you're like low, you're low key, you're sad. Maybe you're 
physically blue? Um, you might go home, you might wanna go home and read a book. Or is it green? Do you wanna you know, go uh, exercise, go to the gym, go do this, go do that? So depending on what that mood ring tells you, you're gonna go in a different direction in that freeway, am I right? You're gonna go to the gym, you know, um, northbound on the 710, are you gonna go out? Are you gonna go eastbound um, to, you know, I don't know what would be westbound, towards downtown LA? So that's what, that's what a color test is telling you, is that you, you wanna go out, you wanna do something, and, and that color tells you where, what direction you're headed, all right? So that's the first test. So the way that I elucidate this is, so we have big color tests. Um, Marky is one of the biggest color tests we use, and Mecky and Freudy are another color test we use. So if I would add heroin to Marky, Mecky, and Freudy, it would give me purple with Mecky or Marky, green with Mecky, and purple with Freudy. It's not the best purple. It kind of looks sandy on the screen, but it's it's purple. It's a very vivid purple. So opiates give a purple color reaction with the marquee reagent or the marquee chemical. But with amphetamines, if I were to add methamphetamine to marquee, I'm going to get an entirely different color. I'm going to get orange. Now you're like, okay, that's interesting, you know, Mark. Why, do, why does that matter? Well, the, the steps after the color test are very different as far as heroin and methamphetamine. You're going to go in two completely different directions depending on what that possible drug is. And that's because the drug chemistry of methamphetamine and heroin are very different. So that's, that's why we use color test is to point us in the direction. Am I going to go, um, go right to the IR or am I going to perform a chemical extraction? Am I going to go out tonight or am I going to stay in tonight? That's what that mood ring, that color on that mood ring is telling us. So once we've performed color tests, we do a microcrystalline test. And microcrystalline tests are still a screening step, meaning it's not giving you a confirmation, but it's giving you a stronger, um, clearer direction as to what this possible substance is. So um, what do I mean by that? Well, microcrystalline tests are where we have a little bit of drug on a slide, and I add a little bit of drug, and I add some chemicals, and based on the chemicals that I add to the drug, little crystals will form. And those crystals are very unique to the drug. Now that's really interesting. So we're getting better, so we're getting more specific because those crystals are more specific to the drug, but I still can't identify that drug completely. So for example, I had mentioned in color tests that opiates, any opiate is gonna give you purple, green, purple. Now, what else? So within the opiate family, I have heroin, I have morphine, I have codeine, I have oxycodone, hydrocodone. So it's still going to give me some variation of purple, green, purple. Well, the crystals for codeine and heroin and morphine are different. So the crystals are going to be different depending on what I'm going to be viewing. When I look down the microscope at my slide, those crystals are going to be different. And that's great. That means that I'm getting closer and closer to the true identity of whatever drug was submitted to me. So in my example of the mood ring, this uh, microcrystalline test could take the form as a text term, your friend, saying, we're going to go out tonight, we're going to Dodger Stadium, or we're going to go to that bar we've been really wanting to, or we're going to stay inside tonight and you know have a self-care you know, night, or we're going to go work out together. So you're getting closer to the true identity of what you're going to do, but you still don't know exactly what's going to happen, all right? So that's what a microcrystalline test does. It's pointing you further into a more specific direction, but you still don't know what's, what that direction, or what, what that uh, end goal is, what that identity of that substance is, all right? So these are the beautiful, really, um, they're actually really stunning in the microscope, crystals that we see. So cocaine gives a cross, methamphetamine gives these like rods, and then heroin gives like these bigger, like fatter rods, whereas methamphetamine are more um, spinous. So once we've performed 
the screening steps of color and crystal and microcrystalline exams, then we're going to move on to our confirmation. So that's GCMS or FTIR. So GCMS is used for chemical mixtures, meaning I've seen from my colors and my crystal tests that maybe there is uh, cocaine and methamphetamine in my one sample. And when, if you watched the IR video, that's actually not going to work because I'm going to have um, IR spectra for both methamphetamine and cocaine. So that's why I would use a GCMS because I want to be able to separate my methamphetamine from my cocaine and then I can identify it using the MS, which, which breaks it apart. And then we look at the individual pieces kind of like a puzzle. We, we use the puzzle pieces to build back and look at the whole picture of what the puzzle is saying. And then we have, oh, oh, I guess I didn't put IR. See guys, I'm, this is just awful. IR is basically a technique used for confirming pure substances. So IR um, is where infrared radiation, which exists below the red wavelength of visible light, which makes my face look so shiny and awful. Um, red, it, it exists below the red wavelength, but the interesting thing is that IR radiation in, uh, interacts with molecules in a very unique fashion. So unique that we say that it produces a chemical fingerprint for that substance, all right? The caveat is that it has to be a pure substance because if I have multiple substances interacting with that IR light, then all the fingerprints are going to overlap with each other and I'm not going to be able to understand what is coming from what molecule. So the way that I, you know, back to my analogy is GCMS and IR is basically the, you know, say these are the photos from the morning after, you know, say that you had a fun, crazy, wild night with your friends and you're looking back at the photos. Oh my gosh, I danced on the tabletop. Oh my gosh, I, you know, we had one big um, ice cream sundae. Oh my gosh, I lifted all those weights at the gym and we have video of it. Oh my gosh, I made a green tea mask while, you know, uh, reading a book at home. That's what GCMS and IFTIR are, is those, you know, those receipts, as the kids call them, show me the receipts. Those are the receipts. Those are, those are the factual data of what actually happened you know, the night that you went out or you stayed home or you went to the gym, because it's confirming the identity of what happened or what that substance is. All right. So just kind of remember that that scheme of the screening steps, which are color and crystals, and then the confirmatory step, which is either GCMS and IR. All righty, guys. So this was a quick video. I'm kind of happy with it. I hope you guys have a great time. Uh, yeah, stay inside live your life, maybe go out for self-care, and then when this is done and over with, then you can dance on the tabletops, because I know I will. All right, guys, see you later.